What would you have liked to know when you were 20? So that's a difficult question, and probably I would not uh, send any messages from Odette of uh, today's world to Odette in the 20s, because I think that my past, this trial and error and experimentation was very important for the way that my brain was formed and ultimately for my intellectual development. So in some sense, I wouldn't like to provide the clue Uh, to myself in the age of 20 that will allow me to, to step on a particular path because it would dep deprive me from all the, uh, the alternative uh, paths that I took that I think ultimately helped me to form myself as same form today. So in fact, I would not, uh, I would not send any messages to myself in the age of 20. I will allow myself to to live the same life of experimentation and natural evolution. Do you have a message for a 20-year-old uh, person that would like to go into the into, uh, academic field? Yes, I think uh, the, the main message is that the academic field is just fascinating. And I think that I cannot envision a more intriguing and a more uh, rewarding uh, career than the academic one. And uh, if you do step into the academic career, I think it is really important to focus on uh, important questions. So there is a tendency in science to, uh, to ask narrower and narrower questions. This is truly universally. Uh, people become great specialists on the account of, uh, of basically uh, preventing large knowledge creation. And I think that at least my insights and my view based on my research career is that don't uh, allow yourself to over-specialize. I think it's important to be a specialist, to make an impact, but at the same time, maintain your connection to the field as a whole, to other fields, because ultimately this will allow you to ask the most meaningful questions that can be asked uh, down the road. That's a good one.